Hello everyone, I am Zoe Schwind and earlier this week the community was treated to some massive news regarding Overwatch 2. Of course, the biggest announcement by far was the news that Overwatch 2 will arrive on October the 4th as an always-on, always-evolving life service game that will be free to play for everyone. Let's now, go. if you're like me, you're eager to learn more. And that is why I'm here today at the Blizzard campus to better understand the decisions behind the announcements, find out what they mean for the players, and, with some luck, uncover a few new game details for you at home. And be sure to stay tuned for the world premiere of the new cinematic, The Wastelander, which was teased just a few days ago. So with that, let's get into it. The cinematics are amazing, by the way. I love them. Joining me are Overwatch game director Aaron Keller and production director Paul Hale. First, how are you two doing? I'm doing great, excited. Yes, me too, so excited to be talking about this. And I'm so excited to have you both here. Now, uh, there was a ton of news which dropped over the weekend and the community has been buzzing. And I'm excited to be able to sit down with you two now to unpack all of this for everyone watching at home. Now, the biggest announcement had to be the news that Overwatch 2 is releasing on October 4th as a free-to-play live service. That's incredible and that must be very, very exciting for you and your team. Yeah, Overwatch 2, it's been a labor of love for our, our team. We're all dedicated to creating a game that our community will enjoy for years to come. We also want players to feel like there was always something new for them to play or experience in the game. These goals really led us down the path of developing Overwatch 2 as an always-on living game. One that continues to evolve and expand through seasonal content drops and keeps the game as fresh and fun to play long after it turns on. So that, We're that, that lucky was to cool have to such that. a passionate and creative set of players. And we know that they've been craving more ways to play the game they love so much. In recent years, we haven't done a good enough job at delivering that for our fans, and we feel their frustration. We took a hard look at our strategy for Overwatch 2 to make sure that we could deliver new heroes, new maps, modes, and more to the community on a frequent and consistent basis. As an Overwatch fan, of course, that's music to my ears. We know that's the community's yep. top priority. New hero every other we season. we feel like we have the right approach mm -hmm. to be able to deliver that for them well into the future. How are you and the team planning to deliver on that promise? Uh, well, the very first step is getting the game into everyone's hands. And that's going to happen on October 4th when we transition yep. Overwatch 1 and invite every PC and console player to drop in and experience Overwatch 2's reimagined PvP experience. And that's just the beginning. Our plan is to deliver a steady drumbeat of new content every nine weeks through free seasonal updates, ensuring that there's always something new to Finally. play, chase, unlock I can't in wait. Overwatch 2. I can't wait. Because well, the new content amazing. consistently. It's so much of it, too. And now I am sure every everyone nine weeks. wants to hear more details. Of course, uh, I'd be happy to share a look at the road ahead. It, Our it, journey is going to begin on October 4th. It's going to be awesome. And Overwatch 2 oh. release is free to play. This includes three new heroes, six new maps, a brand new mode, and more. The new heroes include Sojourn, Junker Queen, and a brand new support hero that we'll reveal in the months ahead. I wonder who that's going to be, Our new the maps support hero. take players across the globe to iconic locations. Portugal? Our new PvP mode called Push will challenge teams in new and exciting ways. Players will also be able to unlock new cosmetic items through the in-game store and battle pass, as well as complete weekly well, challenges is. and experience the start of competitive play 2.0. And of and course, we saw charms everyone right there will too. also be able to access the revamped heroes, PVP maps, and fan favorite game modes from the first Overwatch game. Our next season will arrive in early December, where we will introduce a new tank hero. New tank hero? Map. We'll have more new cosmetic items for players to earn and unlock. And we end up getting new two new tanks within that amount of time. Store. And in 2023, we'll continue to release a new season every nine weeks with either a new hero, new map, or new mode. And players PVE. will get the chance to earn more themed content, complete weekly challenges, access new battle passes, and more. And PVE is confirmed. Confirmed. 
for 2023. So like in 2023, we'll also begin releasing our new PVE experiences, which we're really excited about. We're really looking forward to being able to share more with the community as we get closer to releasing them. I know we've seen more and more games shift towards that free to play model a in lot recent of games. years, and it really does seem like players have taken a liking to it, especially shooter fans. Um, did that have an impact on deciding to make Overwatch 2 uh, go free to play? Honestly, not really. For us, free to play games offer a lot of advantages. From the very start, Overwatch was designed to be a social experience. We have heroes of different roles and they all rely on each other in, in order to accomplish their objectives in the game. So it requires a lot of teamwork. We also see that outside of our game, within our community, with fan art, cosplay, and the Overwatch League. We know our fans are having the most fun when they're playing with their friends or meeting new ones. And the move to free to play makes it easy for everyone to just drop in, play the game, join the community, whether they own Overwatch 1 or not. And with Overwatch 2 crossplay enabled, people can play together no matter what platform they prefer to play on. It's always been a game that stood for inclusivity and community. When they see the roster of heroes, we want them to feel like there's someone there that they can feel connected to because the Overwatch universe is and uh, always will be a place for everyone. I'm like looking at all the and heroes they're picking. Like we have an incredible opportunity with Overwatch 2 to really embrace it. I can't wait for October when this incredible journey will begin for all of us. Now that we have a better understanding of what's to come, I'd love to dive a little deeper, uh, starting with Overwatch 2's new approach to PvP. Can you maybe elaborate and explain a little more? Sure. PvP has always been at the heart of the Overwatch experience, and we've made some tweaks to it over the years, but Overwatch 2 really gave us the opportunity to put the mode under a microscope. And we really wanted players to feel that they had more impact in a match. And we've made significant fundamental changes that we just couldn't do in the current live game. This was a foundational shift that changed everything. Heroes, maps, and changed more. A lot. So we had a to reevaluate every aspect of PvP to ensure we got it right. We've been encouraged by player feedback from the first beta, and we will continue to make updates and improvements in the game. Well, earlier today, I had a chance to sit down with a few additional members of the Overwatch team and hear more about all the work they're doing to redefine PvP in Overwatch 2. So let's take a look. One of the things that gets us up in the morning, happy to work on Overwatch, it's first and foremost a really special game, the way we portray a bright future. Everyone on the team is really proud of it. We're bringing an all new PVP experience. We're transforming from a 6v6 to a 5v5. Changed a lot of how we design heroes and actually how we balance them as well. We had to go back and look at all the heroes and all the tanks especially and make sure that everyone fits and works really well in this new paradigm this newfound importance on each individual player to feel like they can really make an impact on the game. We're trying to obviously maintain the original character's identity and overall silhouette, colors, statements, but also kind of bring something a little bit new. There's the hat. We can make balance adjustments really quick, as fast as our design team sees that there's an issue. Jeff Goodman and the rest of the hero design team have been loving all the feedback coming in. They have tons of awesome ideas about uh, how to change or uh, adjust balance. So heroes like Arissa got a, a major rework. We're looking at how I mean, many Arissa's barriers really are in place. You think but they definitely Overwatch, do need to balance really more consistently. Shields. But we're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, what if she didn't have that? What would that even look like? We're just always looking for great opportunities to change for the better. I'm really excited about how we've refreshed uh, all the maps. I think we've done a lot of great changes, especially for PvP. A lot of our old stuff just looks gorgeous now. We've done a lot with the art and with lighting and shadows and just made stuff pop a little bit more. We also added some options with like daytime, nighttime. I think all of the Overwatch 2 maps are custom recorded in the actual place. We've hired a field recordist to actually go capture ambience of the real world location. We realize it's a subtle detail, but those are the things that really make these maps come to life. 
we have done in the past. I mean, that's cool. Playing all the old maps in 5v5 and adjusting things for that kind of setup, whether it's moving cover around just a little bit or tweaking a door. In the beta, we're listening to feedback, so we're going to improve each map based on what the players have been singing. Mm -hmm. We've been working on these for a little while now, and we're really excited about it. We were really happy with the positive feedback once people were able to play it, and I think it was an important milestone for us to get it in players' hands. Competitive 2.0? Wait, what? Competitive play is a different thing to Wait. a lot of different people. And we really didn't think we were providing enough tools and measures to actually help players out if they did want to improve. We're reworking our scoreboard to provide more information uh, to players as they're like, playing through the match. But then once they finish the match, we're actually going to provide an after-action report. So you can look at the report while you're in queue, you could actually go into uh, your history oh. section and look. We okay, that's a lot towards better. providing you with information that will help you improve your game. We've been getting feedback from a lot of different areas, from our you know, community team, like streamers, influencers. We've also been getting a lot of feedback from Overwatch League players. We oh, do that. want to actually provide a bit of like feeling of progression. So one of the other changes we're making alongside that is not making your skill rating Wait. quite so granular. Right now, it's a very hard number. Instead of a numeric skill rating, we're adding these skill tiers within the larger ones. If you see someone at a really high skill tier, you know that that person so it's like is gold not just two or something that like good that, of an instead Overwatch of player, but they've earned it. Kind of, yeah. So it's not going to be like you're going to be 43, you know, 20. It's going to be more like just, which, which makes sense. One of the cool things about Overwatch 2 is it has this new push game mode and maps along with it pushes a PvP game mode on several different new maps. We've been playing it in the beta, and we've actually been using it in Overwatch League as well. And once we started playtesting it, it was kind of an instant hit. There's a level, it has one path that goes all the way through it from one base to the other, and in the middle is TS1. And he's this <laughs> lovable robot with a pair of barricades next to him. And the players are essentially fighting for control, and if they take control by taking out the other enemy team, TS1 will move a barricade towards the enemy base. To win, you either get that barricade all the way to the enemy base, mm -hmm. or after a certain amount of time, did you move your barricade farther than the enemy team did? It's a very fair game mode. I think the maps are great. It provides for a lot of different like locations where a lot of great fights can happen. And I think as, as I think understanding the maps after a while, the map will play a lot better a lot too. of engine upgrades in the game. So this allows us to do faster iteration. This was a huge effort by our engine team to allow the art team to build faster, more detailed environments in a shorter amount of time. Okay. You will get to experience the game world. We wanted to feel much more immersive. Okay. Overwatch 2 is a dream for audio features. It's everything we've ever really wanted to do. We, we really go into every little bit of detail, trying to find uh, a way that every sound will cut through. When we started on Overwatch 1, we were really, really focused on the headphone mix. We, we thought for, you know, a PC-first kind of game, we realized that people listen to Overwatch in all types of different places. So now we support home theater Dolby Atmos in the game. Now consoles offer all kinds of new things too, like 3D audio that we're supporting. There's new voice lines, new conversations between all of the favorite heroes. And we have so many, there'll be more that'll just come to the game over time. We've written 25,000 voice lines for Overwatch 2. 25,000? So, tons of new features. And the reality is that That's Overwatch scales even beyond that, all the way up to giant sports arenas for our Overwatch finals. Everything you like about Overwatch, you're gonna get that in Overwatch 2, but even more. You know, we're really listening to that feedback. A lot of it we felt like, man, we really think this is going to be super fun. We just need people to be able to play it. October 4th is really just the beginning. I mean, just amazing work by the entire team. And I personally can't wait to finally get my hands on the full PvP experience when Overwatch 2 goes live this October. And October is just the start. As Paul mentioned earlier, Overwatch 2 will continue to evolve and grow over time. But mm -hmm. what does that mean for us, the players? Well, I went behind the scenes to talk with the team working on new seasonal content and find out more. So let's take a closer look at what players can expect when Overwatch 2 expands post-launch. We're really excited because people will just be able to just fully immerse yourself in the maps and the storylines and the heroes. 
With the new seasonal model, we'll be able to drop a ton of content in very frequently as we're updating the game through these big seasonal drops. Which is... We're looking at releasing heroes every other season and then a map in between those. And on yep. top of that, we're looking at dropping a ton of content involving skins and other great goodies for players to get their hands on for each seasonal drop. Which is what Overwatch needs. We have that. so much that we want to do in Overwatch to develop this game. Consistent updates. Because we think it's the next step for us. Like that, we think that had to be a thing. There's so sure. much more we could bring. I'm really happy moving to our new seasonal based schedule, making this really huge commitment to regular updates. It's exciting at the same time because I know what this team can do. We really want players to be able to anticipate when things are going to enter the game. With all the new content and events coming in, it's even more important to just make sure that everybody knows what's coming. And along with the free-to-play change, we're doing away with loot boxes entirely. We have a new Battle Pass model coming in, and we have a store as well, so players will have a lot more control about how they interact with the game and how they acquire new content. We've been working on so many oh, time things to open all my loot boxes. Years. I'm most excited <laughs> for folks to see some of the new heroes that we've been kind of cooking up. It's a bunch of different reasons why we choose to make a hero. We're trying to follow the narrative, pick the hero that makes sense. Or do we need to create a hero that answers this mana, counters a certain strategy that's too strong in the game? We've got two more supports and another tank in just the first couple of seasons. And we're still working on new characters for a year, year and a half down the line as well. There's characters that folks have already seen glimpses of in the story. And there's also characters that you've never seen before, never heard about. We were looking at making sure the new heroes fit within this new, very fast paced paradigm and mm -hmm. less shields and crowd control. You can see a lot less of that reflected CC. in gameplay moments, but with a much faster pace. Less vibe. CC. That's all I'm saying. That's one thing I've noticed, the difference between Overwatch 1 and 2. We want to push the sci-fi, the futuristic feeling of maps. There's a touch of sci-fi everywhere you look. So this is something that was a little bit more subtle in Overwatch 1. We really want players to feel that the world takes place in not so distant future. Coming up next is Rio. Rio, a new PvP map. Pretty sure everybody's going to love that one as well. It's a great map. It's close to the team. Many people on the team are from Brazil, so it was kind of fun to inject the culture, the colors, the vibe into this map. There's a map that takes place in Portugal. Mm -hmm. This map is pretty close to the team because our lead environment artist, he's from Portugal. People from the location should really get a sense that we've done a ton of research and we were very inspired and I think we captured it pretty beautifully in the game. It is a push map, one of the newest game modes, and we tried some pretty interesting layouts for this one, so we hope the players like it. It looks sick. We definitely sick. want the game to yeah. feel like a globe-trotting adventure. There's new types of content from what you're used to in Overwatch 1. We have charms, we have banners. Yep. The current Mythic skin that's in the works, that I worked on actually, is for Genji. He's got this kind of cyberpunk Japanese demonic theme. Mythic skins are meant sick. to be this next tier of skins above legendary. We want players to be able to go in there and pick and choose certain pieces meant to be this extra awesome legendary skin that you can customize. We're concurrently developing quite a few mythic skins. They're gonna be released over the seasons. All this amazing stuff, all of the amazing skins. For weapon charms, really what we're looking for there is just for the players to be able to express themselves and dress their character up. One of our core tenets on Overwatch visually is to focus a lot on the first person view. We want you to be able to see it and enjoy it while you're playing the game. One thing that was really important to us was to make sure that players, if they earn anything in the game anywhere, that they're able to use it everywhere. So if you earn something on console or on PC or on Overwatch 1, you can always use it in anywhere in Overwatch 2 as well. And with each yep. new season, there'll be a ton of new content and a new battle pass as well. These seasonal updates will allow us to be constantly infusing the game with new content, new heroes, new maps. So the game is going to feel fresh just all Which the time. Is exactly There's always going to be Overwatch something for you to do or to work towards. Updates. There's never going to be a point a few where times. you're like, gosh, I don't have anything to do. Being able to provide players with new heroes every so often, new maps. It is going to be a growing and evolving game. There's so much for us to explore as we move forward. Get ready. It's going to be really exciting, really fun. With both PvP and PvE, there's going to be really great content for you to immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again with your friends. We can't wait for October 4th. We're just excited to be back. So they're excited to be back. I mean, it's so great to content. see how much thought and care your team is pouring into uh, really elevating the game through post-launch season. So you mentioned that PvE is coming in 2023. Now, can you tell us how the development is going and why the team is committed to bringing these type of experiences into Overwatch? We're all so invested in the world of Overwatch and, and the heroes that live in it. 
And through the years, we've developed cinematics, animated shorts, and graphic novels for our players who just want to get deeper into the lore. With PvE, we have an opportunity to go a step further, to go deeper into diverse storytelling in ways that we really just haven't been able to before. So we are planning to expand the Overwatch universe through these seasons that we just described, and we will start delivering this PvE gameplay in 2023. PvE will be delivered mm -hmm. through the live service, and that means we'll be able to deliver and tell more Overwatch stories and create more opportunities to experience our heroes. Here's a sneak peek at what we're working on. The team's goal Ooh, for PvE, PvE in Overwatch 2 is to basically okay. move the overall story of Overwatch 4. We've told a lot of short stories along the way. There are a lot of to-be-continues. It's time for us to answer those questions, close off some of those stories, ask new questions. So the new game will definitely move the overall canon of the lore of Overwatch forward. Get those doors open! For the PvP live service, for certain seasons, you're also going to get some PvE maps. You'll be fighting Null Sector in at least some of the maps. They've come back and they're mad, so it's Overwatch's job to take them out. There's going to be content for you to immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again. A lot of the older guys from the original Overwatch team, they're coming back but they need help with some of the younger generation like Brigitte and Lucio. So we're going to tell the story of how Overwatch basically gets back together. Another thing we want to do with uh, the story is to showcase more of where the characters are from. For example, Torbjorn is from Gothenburg. Players will get a chance to see what Torbjorn's factory looks like. You can play PvE with your friends and immerse yourself in the world and stay inside of it a little bit longer. I can't wait for PvE. Wow, this I is incredible. PvE, it's so. so great to get that first sneak peek. So thank you so much for sharing that. Before I let you run off, is there anything you would like to say to the community watching? Yeah, we are so excited for today. And we're so excited for you all to be able to see everything that we want to show you. And we really cannot wait for October 4th when we're all playing this game together. Neither mm -hmm. can I. Now, we'll also take a deeper look at a brand new hero. That's right, Junker Queen, who will be playable for the first time during the beta later this month already. Now, before we 28. do that, though, we thought we'd take a look at Junker Queen's origin story to get to know the next great Overwatch character a little better. Paul, Aaron, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Best of luck to you and, of course, your entire team as you gear up for that launch. Let's take a look. I love that. Wow, just wow. What an unbelievable new hero. And we will dive deeper into Junker Queen. But first, I wanted to introduce art director Dion Rogers and a few new faces to the show. We have narrative designer Miranda Moyer and cinematic director Ben Dye. Thank you guys so much for joining. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for yeah, having us. Happy to be yeah. here. I'm really excited to share this. It takes an army to create a game. <laughs> I mean, the effort is clearly paying off. That short was just so much fun to watch. Now, it's been such an exciting week for everyone watching, but I'm sure for you three as well. Uh, players have learned that the next beta is coming on June 28th. Can you tell me a little bit more about mm -hmm. what we can expect to see in this beta? 
the biggest thing is to open the console players this time. There We're gonna go. add a new map, Rio. Junker Queen will be playable finally. Can't wait. So this should be pretty fun. I mean, I personally can't wait to get my hands on Junker Queen. And you're representing her right there with the cool shirt as yeah. well. Uh, what a great segue. So let's talk more about the newest Overwatch hero. I think it's super exciting. I know everybody has been really anticipating this character for a long time. She's been super prominent in our lore ever since the Junkertown map came out. And I think people have really been looking forward to finally getting to experience everything that she has to offer. What makes Junker Queen so unique? And why do you think the Overwatch players will love her? So Junker Queen is interesting. Usually when we start a character, we do a bunch of drawings and, and we have a little story. But she was kind of born out of the Junkertown map. We started to create this map that was associated with Roadhog and Junkrat. This narrative started to appear where they've been kicked out of the city. And so we're like, who kicked them out? And we're like, well, maybe there's some sort of leader. So we had the kind of Junkertown decree that you can see in the level. And then over time, it kind of developed that it was a queen. During the short, we're actually developing her personality. She's full of attitude. You know, that's what we love about her is um, she, she's really, really strong. So she's very recognizable. And obviously the lore behind her um, is very interesting. So some of that potentially can bounce off what the, the game design will be. It's great to hear that it's just such a collaboration with the Overwatch team. Yeah, this is, this is a fun part about working together. Uh, the Overwatch universe, it's filled with memorable heroes. And as you said yourself, Ben, it does take a village of dedicated developers to really bring each one of those to life, but in a meaningful way. So let's take a deeper look at the making of Junker Queen. Here we go. When we started on Junker Queen, first we have to decide what kind of role she's going to take. So uh, she's a tank. She's a really aggressive tank. You know, we didn't want her to be kind of a Reinhardt sounds style, good to stay me. back and guard her, her team. That sounds she's good to me. She's got this very ferocious nature, and we wanted for that to be represented in her gameplay as well. Personally, what I'm most excited about Junker Queen is just her big axe, you know, just to be able to swing that thing around is awesome. It's always great to have some sort of anchor point to make sure we really incorporate this axe into her abilities. Woo! Her Secondary, yeah, I like that, call, Chad. I like blade. that. If you do your quick melee attack, she will kind of swing with the blade instead of a normal punch. Um, it does a little bit of extra damage and creates a wound on the enemy. So she can throw the blade as her secondary fire, and it's really a great sort of skill shot to be able to land on the enemy, especially like a moving enemy if you can land it. And after you throw it, she'll recall it, and it, the force of recalling it, uh, if it's stuck into somebody, will actually pull them forward. So she can actually kind of pull people to herself if you can oh. manage to stick that blade into somebody. Her Jerker Queen's ultimate, we have an ability called Rampage. She creates this kind of whirlwind of magnetized metal, including her weapons, and it whirls around her, and then she dashes forward, and you try to go through as many enemies as possible and tag them all up. That also wounds everybody, which is really important, because it, it's very easy to hit them with this large that effect, sounds so really it heals cool. you for a lot. But also, it creates a debuff on the enemies that reduces the healing that they receive to zero. Wait, you can you Our sound design them? has done an incredible job with her. She's full of snarky fun to the way she plays. So all throughout her kit, there's little guitar sounds actually hidden. So if you listen to her act, she pulls it out and there's a big screech on the guitar strings and she pulls it forward. We have a wonderful actor named Leah who we found after a huge global search trying to find the right voice for her. Here I am. It's really amazing when the right actor matches the character and the personality. You feel this sort of magic that comes out of it. I think players are gonna love her. She's scary, she's awesome. She's a departure from any other hero that we have here. You know, this is just a straightforward badass character. She's just been so much fun to work on and I'm just so glad I to get her. I can't wait to play her, button. sounds so awesome. The queen of Junkertown has arrived. So how does the Junker Queen fit into the overall world of Overwatch? I think Junker Queen's pretty interesting because there have been previous rulers of Junkertown. Uh, Junker Queen was not always the queen. And the old rulers of Junkertown have always been kind of content to just, you know, lord over the city. But Junker Queen, she has a very big axe and big ideas to go along with it. What did you aim uh, to achieve when developing Junker Queen? We want to tell deeper stories for our heroes, have heroes that are connected to the world of the game. Big thing for Overwatch 2 is to move the lore of Overwatch along, so these type of heroes help that. What are her abilities, and how do those abilities actually make her successful in the role she's in? What's pretty awesome about this hero, she was developed when 5v5 from the start. She was never a part of the 6v6 world of Overwatch. Knowing she's the only tank on the team, what abilities that will help bolster the team. She has this commanding shout. It boosts the speed and armor of the heroes around her. So especially you need to push through a choke. She does the shout, all the players hear it, they move forward. 
she has a bunch of weapons, you know. She, I think she named one of her weapons, right? Yeah, she, her, her knife that she throws and pulls back is named Gracie. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> there you go. A lot of her abilities kind of drain on the heroes and gives her health back. She her sounds ultimate, really basically, fine. it shoots you forward and you do this whirlwind with her axe that it does bit like a big anti-nade on everybody yeah. around you. So she's yeah. very aggressive and, and people are going to have a ton of fun playing it. Are there any particular maps uh, you feel that Jungle Queen plays really well on? Getting close is where she's pretty dangerous. So maps that have a nice flank routes allow her to get in closer to the enemy and then start to do her. What she does best is reckoning. So another big piece of news over the weekend that got mm -hmm. the Overwatch community just buzzing uh, with excitement uh, was, of course, the tease of your new cinematic trailer, The Wastelander, uh, which we're going to premiere here in just a few moments. Looking but before forward to seeing we do, this. Uh, ben, can you tell us a little bit more about it? I remember, I remember in the in the very beginning of our story room jam sections, there's talk about what type of story we want to tell, right? Uh, should we include Junkrat? Should we include Rohag? But ultimately, I think we wanted to center focus our on focus on, on yeah. Junk, exactly on our main character. It's a character reveal. It's potentially a sort of a revenge origin story, you know. Actually give a little bit more lore into Junker Town, how she become the queen, how was that society uh, being governed, you know, prior to, to she become the queen. Well, you and the team, you guys pour so much love and time into these cinematics and into these heroes that it really shines through. I want to thank all three of you for taking the time to sit down with me today and sharing all of this amazing information. Yes, yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. I know the fans at home are on the edges of their seats so am I, waiting to see it. So let's take a look at the world premiere of right, the Overwatch 2 new time. cinematic, The Wastelander, featuring the latest hero, Jungle Queen. It's time. Take them out with the rest of the garbage. Let the wasteland deal with them. What? I'm not allowed to have a bad dream. No Wastelander has ever made it to the Reckoning before. <laughs> but here I am. Free for all, with zero rules. And the survivor gets the throne. <laughs> Welcome back, Shaka Jack. King Howell has never lost, not in 13 years of rule. On oh, the battlefield. Not until today. The reckoning begins in five, four, three, two, one. Did you really think this would be a fair fight? You don't survive the reckoning unless the winner grants your mercy. That's why I've got to win this whole thing. All right, let's get this started. <laughs> ah, scavengers like you ain't so bad. I want scabs like him on my side when I'm queen. Speaking of, come on, big boy. 
Octopic Bomb. He's fine. G'day, Mary. What are you smiling about? If you're smart enough to run the Tinkers, why are you working for this strong guy? Ha! Not you be any better. At least I won't shoot my friends in the back. Wastelander scum! Just die! Because we're stronger than you. You haven't had a real fight. In 13 years, we had them every bloody day! I am the king. I am everyone here! Not in this arena. What the? Junkrat. This meathead has a bigger magnet? Go, go. Same mercy you showed my family 13 years ago. Get out of my city. <gasps> you. Yeah! Junker Queen! <laughs> well, that turned out alright, didn't it? But now they're probably wondering what sort of changes I'll make around here. Well, buckle up. They're about to find out. This is the legend of the Duck and Queen. Watch your back to the hurt Fought the world since 17. To bear down with Kerosene. I love their cinematics. They're so good. Their cinematics are so good. wraps things up for today here at Blizzard. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in and make sure to follow Play Overwatch on social for all the latest news and announcements about Overwatch 2. And I can't wait to see you all in game. Can't wait. I can't wait. I think that's it. Okay, so I think I want to go back here and look at... I'm just going to give a sound for a second. Talk about some of the, like, the really, like... The, we saw so many things during this reveal. And I think one of the biggest things we saw finally was the content. 
that they're going to be releasing. And I think that was one of the most important things that I had said that like Overwatch in general always needed that. People like I've talked about it before. I talked about it the other day. Like one of the biggest things we've seen in Overwatch in general is that people like I think this is where I want to go to. Is this where it's at? It's like right here, right? Here we go. So like one of the biggest things we really wanted to see with Overwatch in general is that there was consistent like like consistent um like I guess like just consistent content. Like, Overwatch has always needed that, right? And that was something that, with them going free-to-play, I think that's where we, exactly what we're going to see across the board. Because um, a lot of models with uh, games now in general, they, they literally will... The, the model of the game is content every couple of months. So obviously they talked about the idea that... They talked about the idea that in every nine weeks, we will get new content. Now, they said there's going to be a new hero every... A new hero every... Uh, two seasons, which means that will be kind of be kind of on like the schedule it used to be, where it would be like a hero every like four months or so, which makes sense, right? On on that, so I think one of the really cool things about it in general is that we're gonna have content now, right? Like we have played so many games of Overwatch, and one of the biggest things we've seen is that there just hasn't been any updates um, in general. And I think it's correct me if I'm wrong. This is probably the first time. This is the first time that we'll ever like have. A consistent schedule with everything right like before it was it would get released when it was ready sometimes it would be at a certain point you wouldn't know it was coming this time we know and i've talked about it before in the past i've i, I talked about how one of the biggest things we would want to see with overwatch in general is that every season would be excited right i've talked about how we're thinking we're on season like 35 right now and they never made any season feel like the next season was something different it was just hey guess what new season go do your placements go ha you know that's it now they're changing that to where, like, when you know the next season's coming, you're like, holy crap, a new season's coming. I know there's going to be a new hero uh, or a new map or they're going to release something. I imagine when the PvE releases, they'll have, like, releases with PvE within that. That is, like, one of the biggest things we saw is that we now have a content schedule. We now know there's going to be new things. There's going to be new things coming. And I think that's going to be really important for Overwatch in the future. And I think, and I said it, People have always wanted to have a reason to play it, but when they didn't have many updates, people went and tried different stuff because there wasn't updates happening. Um, now we're getting that. Starting October 4th, we're going to get those updates. It's not like, you know, Overwatch Hunter's going to right now. Like, October 4th, from there on out, we will be getting every single season new stuff. A bunch of new stuff, it seems like. Obviously, they didn't go into full detail about, like, you know, all of that, but we're going to be getting stuff now. That means that every two months, chat, we will have something new, which I, I is just... You know, I, I love this game. It's 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 crazy because you know we we've streamed so much Overwatch, we've played so much Overwatch. I mean, I'm I I, I can't wait. I'm excited. I, I love doing this. I love streaming. I love being able to just like just just do this every day and to be able to finally get to the point where we can kind of like look at this and and see this like unbelievable, you know, just this unbelievable. I I just, I just can't wait. I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm so ready. <laughs> I'm so ready. Like, it's just, you know, we're going to keep doing our thing, chat. We're going to keep doing our thing. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the consistent content that there's going to be. Because I think that's going to be um, awesome. Because we've never had that with Overwatch. I mean, even when they had content come out at the beginning of the game, it wasn't guaranteed to be every, basically, two months. Now we know that we're getting stuff. And I, I imagine they'll be able to consistently do this for a long time. I mean, not only are we going to get the PvP, we're going to get the PvE. So they confirm PvE next year. October 4th, we have the first... Um, obviously, they're going to be releasing the heroes, and we have the new tank hero, which... Chat, we're getting two new tanks. I can't wait, because not only do we get to try Junker Queen in a couple weeks, we also get to play... We also get to go and play whatever tank hero is coming out in December, right? Like, it, something I'm really looking forward to, and something I'm just, I'm just ready. I'm just ready. I can't wait. I can't wait. So... But yeah, that's what we're going to see. So we now know at least the first, I guess, two seasons worth. They talked about a little bit about the new competitive, too, like where they're changing competitive now. It's not going to be, you know, and I'm just going to go through the video here in a second and try to find um, some of the other stuff in here that we saw. Like, we're going to see... Um, what was I saying on that part? I lost that part. Yep, you said two new supports. Yeah, like more supports, more tanks. 
I know there'll be more DPS there too, but obviously one thing we don't have a lot of is supports and tanks, so they're going to be really adding those right at the beginning, which kind of makes sense. They had talked about a while back how they're working on a lot of supports and tanks. Oh yeah, like competitive, like, you know, it's not going to be your, you know, 3350 now. It's going to have, you know, maybe Diamond 4 or however they like readjust that, which I think a lot of games do that now and it kind of makes sense they're going down that. So having that, so you kind of stay in that Diamond 4 or you can have this way to play Obviously, we don't know what they're going to be, how they're going to, like, name everything, but that's going to be really cool. Like, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to all the new stuff. Like, for me personally, I'm just, I'm ready. I can't wait. Like, I mean, they talked about things that, like, they go around to the, the maps they make and get the sounds from around where the map's from. Like, there was so much stuff that we learned about it, and I'm excited about that. Like this. I wanted to find this 100%. Is it right here? Here we go. So we're going to have this now. Like, this is probably a little bit of work in progress with how it's actually going to look. But now you have this, this brand new way to, like, look at your games, to kind of have an idea. It, it has, it's a lot better, I think. And I'm looking forward to that when they do have this. Um, um, it, it's exciting, to say the least. It's, it's exciting, to say the least. And I, you'll probably hear me talk about it a lot more, um, about how you know, much I'm looking forward to it and all that in general. But it's been really, really cool to see that we're going to have just new stuff. Um, after not having much new stuff for a while. I mean, a long while. It, it's been essentially over two years. Uh, obviously, we've had some stuff here and there, but I, I just can't wait. So this is like Cyber Demon Genji. So this, this is Cyber Demon Genji. Uh, the Hurt Line, thanks for the 17 months of the Tier 1. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, wow, that looks sick now. So it says color customization? Wait. Oh, wow, wait a second. So there's like neon, tactical, and demonic. So is that with these skins? Like you can actually customize? Oh, you can. Oh, so it's like when you have the mythic skin, it's going to be more than just what that actual skin starts with. Like you have customization to it. Okay. Oh, okay, there's mask customization. So you have demon, lion, and then spirit. Oh, I didn't even see this stuff when they were showing it. I didn't even realize that. And then different tattoos. Like, that's really cool. I didn't realize they were going to have this like, type of customization with it. I didn't, even, I didn't even recognize that. 